Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and it's Brick Hall O'Clock, this time with a package from Bricklink.com. Okay, let's get going. Let's see if there's any paperwork in there. No, just loads and loads of bubble wrap. Get rid of that. And we have got all tied in bags, it would seem. Yep. Bags, 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 and bags. Right. In no particular order. Ah, now this is an interesting piece. This is half of the planet Tatooine from Star Wars. It was part of a um, pod racer set, uh, 9675. And I just wanted it for its... Uh, hemisphere shape because I've got a plan for this so it's not going to be using this pattern though it is a lovely pattern I must say um, but I'm going to use this for this shape so that'll be a surprise look out for that in a video coming soon um, but yeah that's quite an interesting one let's just empty this out so I think the majority of this order is used so it'll all be getting a wash straight after this video there we've got a birthday boy from series 18. I've already got this minifigure, but here's another one for, it was about £1.80, I think. So, I mean, that hair piece is just fantastic. The head is good. Well, every part of it's good, really. So I'll probably break this into bits and use it um, for lots of different minifigures around my city. So worth more than the sum of its parts. Uh than this so if you've watched uh, a previous brick haul from bricklink the other week i got a few of these pieces and now i've got a heck of a lot more and i'm using these as shrimp for the shrimp boat as part of the hidden side set it's a shrimp boat and there's a shrimp shack which is obviously turning the raw shrimp into cooked produce so i'm going to need some crates with shrimp in and um these are pretty good at representing shrimp. So I need a lot of those. There's about 60 in there. So I would have thought that's going to be enough for probably about, what, three crates worth of shrimp. So I won't pour those out, but very good. Oh, wow. There's a very little Darth Vader. What are these called? Micro figures? I mean, they're the really small ones that look like statues. I don't know what this is, but it's the game-sized one. So this was part of a um, Battle of Hoth game. Uh, that's set 3866. And um, he's rather sweet and cool, isn't he? Little Darth Vader. So I thought he could either be uh, in a toy shop for sale as a toy, or maybe he's um, in my pawnbrokers, which I haven't done yet. But a very nice piece. Advertising hoarding for City Pizza. That's just from the recent pizza van, 60150. It was good to have that. That I didn't buy because it was stickered. I just needed a 1x4 black panel. It's got a Task Force sticker on it. Don't think I'll keep that. I'll probably just bin that sticker, to be honest. Or at least peel it off carefully and stick it onto a used sticker sheet. So if I do think of a use for it later, then I can. More black fence pieces. I've started collecting this style as well, just so I've got a lot for when I decide where I'm going to use it. Because with having a city that's on many different layers, it's really good to have some fencing to stop minifigures falling to their deaths. Oh, that's a shame. That is a shame. I'll see if I can rescue that. Um, but that is badly peeling sticker with a lot of carpet fluff and dirt underneath it. So this is a obviously a train station ticket machine and it's part of an old hogwarts express set from 2001 that's uh set 4708 i've already got one of these and i wanted a second one um because it's also god it's a very mucky piece indeed there's a lot of muck on there uh but it's one of those pieces that's actually sort of a attorney secret swivel door which sort of swivels on this central pivot on the top and bottom so it's almost like a secret door 
um, between two different areas. And I wanted to use it as that, but also have it as a ticket machine. So the one I've got is fine. I might have to put this back on my wanted list unless I can salvage that. So that's a bit of a disappointment, I must say. Oh, well, moving on. A clipboard, stickered piece. That's from the uh, auto transporter set, 60060. I've already got that set and I've already got this uh, clipboard, but it's got to be a useful thing for using elsewhere. Security transport for a bit of cargo. A grey sort of package for a bit of cargo. And a red one. And yep, you guessed it, a black one. A lot of these will need repositioning using my patented hot tea technique. So they're on the center of their respective tiles. Uh, I needed a couple of these one by one Technic bricks in case I need to make some amendments to the uh, rocket ride when I finally get to putting that in my fairground. I collect a lot of these um, tread plate tiles just when I need them for steps and so on. And there's a couple of white arches for supporting different layers of my multi-layered city. So there'll be more along that theme very soon. Whoa. One on the floor. More arches for the same reason. More 2 by 2 by 3 bricks, lots of those for holding up um, bits of some hair there. That's nice, isn't it? Um, for holding up bits of city and panel for holding up bits of city. So a lot of these big bricks are just for holding up different layers and doing structural work in my city. There's another advert there for Joe's Plumbing. That's from the um, Flying Flusher set, 70811. Now I've got that set as well, um, but it's always good to have an advert for something uh, where you've got a vehicle elsewhere because it sort of obviously has a good connection. So this and this, in fact, will be, um, you know, two vans driving around my city, but will also have an advert for, for their services um, somewhere else. So that's very good. So I've got a lot of these tan, dark tan rather, um, plates in different angled shapes because they're very cheap and I can use them to make paths. And I'm going to use these to make paths in my fairground because you can get some pretty interesting shapes uh, of paths by using combinations of these. And it'll just be uh, in and amongst the rides of my fairground. So I got those because they were just a few pennies each because they're obviously not a very popular colour or very popular um, shapes. Then the reason for this order is all this trans green stuff because there's two doors there. They just fit in a normal frame and a very important window with a three bars or two bars across rather three panes so this was the reason for the order and we'll see more of this uh, in one of these other bags hopefully because this is going to be the basis of my office tower which is going to be my next facade building on the edge of my city against the wall but i'm going for a very tall skyscraper office building i'll just open this next bag and there's the main part of it, these big bay windows. Now these were part of a couple of sets, but the main one being the Police Command Post Central from 1998, and that's set 6332. So I've got one, two, three, four of those. Now I already had, well that's got some, I think that's just muck, yeah that's a sticky muck. That's very sticky, that's gonna be hard to wash off. So a top tip for that is to use lighter fluid and just a bit of kitchen towel and that will just dissolve it and come right off and leave no damage whatsoever. So that's a good technique for that. Oh yeah, and this one, look at that. It's got lots of sticky, horrible muck on it. So these will need a very good wash. Uh, so there's four of those, as I say. Um, and I've already got on a previous order about six. And then I already had prior to that about another six something like that. So I've got about 16 now, which means I can have quite a tall tower. Hopefully, hopefully I've got enough. Um, there's another stickered piece that isn't quite in greatest condition. 
So that's quite damaged and peeing off the side. I should be able to salvage that using my hot tea technique. Patented, of course. Um, yeah, and there's bubbles under it and all sorts. So we'll see if we can save that. Maybe I'll do that as part of this video, depending on the length of it. And I've got some more of these pieces. These were really cheap. I've got them in grey there just to help me build rides because I like it because of the uh, hole inside for an axle to pass through. Ditto one of those bricks. An interesting rock brick for a bit of cliff or something. Another one of those. This is interesting. It's a train base, quite obviously, but it's one of the ones that's 28 long. Usually they're 24 long, which is only... A little bit shorter that long but this is the one that's slightly longer and that just makes it a bit more useful because you can have three eight long pallets on it then so three eights is 24 and it leaves you with one there 25 one in the middle of those two 26 one in the middle of those two 27 and one on this end 28 whereas the 24 one if it had three eight long pallets on it they would completely be touching and level with the ends all at the same time so this one actually is from a set uh it's the boat transport set, I forget the number. Um, but I'll probably keep the oil and hydraulic stickers from this end. But I might move them more centrally or something like that. The checkered flag ones I'll probably remove, to be honest. So that's that. Two more bags. Right, this one is absolutely, I'm not going to tip this out because it's just an absolute heap of eight long Technic bricks. Now I'm going to be using these for structure. I'll just show you the sort of thing I mean. But if I need to support a wide area of uh, base plates above, then basically using a combination of these and these, for example, you can get a pretty good um, firm base quite quickly, if you see what I mean, by building something like that, and then you can rest things very securely uh, on top, which is what I've done as part of my marina, so I could have that three-layered um, setup that I've got. So I've got a lot of those, and they'll be very useful. I think I'm going to use some also in the building of this office tower as well. Last bag. And here's the other vital pieces for the office towers. It's this shaped brick, whatever shape you would call that. Well, it's pretty much the same as this bay window because they would fit on like that. So you can see quite quickly, this can become quite a tall tower. And that's what I'm going for. So I've got quite a few of these and I've got quite a few of these. One by two by five bricks for the sides. I'm going to have it a bit deeper. But um, yeah, so that's just a big bag of loads and loads of black bricks. Brilliant. So I've got a lot to be getting on with there. Now, one thing I'm very interested in, because these have got this police print, now, it's not so bad, as I said in my previous haul, because it's it's just a badge with a, a star on it, and that could be a corporate logo. It, it, it's a bit police-y, but it's not, it's not like it says police in words. So I'm wondering whether I should leave that and just go with it with my building, or if I should try and remove it. Now, if I try and move it with abrasion, I will basically scratch up this window really badly, and it will look probably much worse than if I hadn't bothered. So I won't be able to do that. But I've been um, Googling how to remove prints from Lego pieces online. And something that came up was using Brasso. And I've not used Brasso before. It's obviously a, a metal cleaner. And they say use liquid Brasso. But my local hardware store didn't have that. But it did have this metal polish wadding, which is basically kind of like a fine oh god can i get it open no oh which is sort of a fine 
kind of like cloth impregnated with Brasso. God, that really smells. So I'm not going to do that on camera in here because it absolutely stinks. So I was thinking of using one of these because I did buy one too many uh, and giving it a good go with Brasso and seeing what the uh, outcome was. So let's give that a go. Right, so I'm back from using some of the Brasso. And the first news is it did work. It does work quite well. It's quite hard to use. You've got to give it a really, really good uh, thorough going over. Uh, so to remind you what I started with, one of these pieces with the lines and that's printed on. And the problem is that this glass piece is actually glued on to the frame piece. I think it'd be too fragile if it wasn't. And you see that the printed lines go right into uh, behind the uh, pane structure there. So it's actually very, very hard to get all of the print off. So that was the starting position. And this is what I managed to achieve. So on first glance, it looks completely clear. Now, I think it needs another go because you can see A, the bits in the cracks. You can see in there. And on the other side, that's a bit better. And if I can just tilt this right, I'm not sure, maybe trying to catch the light on it a bit. You can see the faint outlines of those stripes. Can you see that? There's a couple of lines along there. So I haven't done it enough. So I'm probably going to need to give it a second go and then see how it looks. Because from an oblique angle like that, you can just see those stripes. I'm not sure if that's... It's worse than that angle, isn't it? Um, I'm not sure if that's going to annoy me or not. So anyway, it does work. Uh, yeah, you can even see that sort of band there, can't you? Where the print stopped before. And so I'm not sure about that. So I think what I'm going to do is build the uh, office tower with the printed ones and then see how much I hate it with the printed ones on. And if I do hate it, I'll take them to this because because it will be right at the back of my setup. You won't be able to see it so closely as to notice these minor imperfections, I think. Uh, so I think we'll play it by ear. Now, there was one set that came with these that weren't patterned. So for those of you who think that taking the print off is sort of destroying the Lego piece or, or something like that. There was a set called Super Rescue Complex uh, 6464, which uh, didn't have this printing on. Uh, and indeed, I've got, I think it was in my last brick haul, actually, or oh, my last bricks and pieces one, uh, well, in my last Bricklink haul, that I had one of the ones without printing on. So I'll still use that in part of my tower because maybe the printing doesn't go all the way up. Anyway, so good lesson. Brasso removes Lego printing. Okay, for those of you who've not seen the patented hot tea technique before, I'll give you a quick rendition. So we have a piece with a very damaged sticker. The first thing to do is to use the hot tea, which is just hot enough to hold, to warm through that sticker to soften the glue. And that's so we can peel it off without causing it any stretching or damage. You have to give it a good warming through. So I'll try that. Now normally you would use a knife to get under the edge of it without damaging it. But in this case, because I've got so much hanging off, I can easily get my hand under it. And it looks like we have a lot of disgusting bits of carpet fiber and pet hair. So I'll get rid of that. And then we can apply a bit more glue and reapply the sticker. Now how I'm getting this dirt off is I'm using the side of the knife. So I'm not pushing into my finger or into the sticker to damage it. I'm just using it as a scraper. Now, if you're not confident with a knife, then don't use one. Just use a butter knife or get an adult to help you or something like that. 
but you can see that if I just push down a little bit, I'm not pushing down too hard because I don't want to scratch off all the sticky. You can see I'm getting quite a lot of that gunk off. I can wipe that on a kitchen towel and then come back for more and keep going until there's none left. So you can see already that's vastly improved, but I'll keep going for a little bit more till I've got the back of the stick completely clean. Right, so that's about all the muck I can get off that sticker. But you can see it's measurably different. Next thing is to clean the piece. So I've given that a good wash and polish with a sunglasses cloth. And then the next thing is just to stick it back on. Now in this particular case, because it was hanging off so badly and had so much fluff attached to it, it's not, um, it's quite sticky still underneath all that, but I'm just gonna add a little bit more glue just to this corner so it doesn't rise up later. And that probably isn't necessary, but it just saved me having to do it again. Right, so then I can apply the sticker. Okay. I think the front of this sticker is still grubby and dirty as well and probably needs a wash as well once it's stuck in the right position. But I don't think you'd believe that that was the same piece. A vast improvement. Okay, that was a really good brick haul. I've got some really interesting pieces there. I've got all the pieces I need to do my uh, fantastic tall office tower facade. I've got this half planet piece so I can do something secret and interesting with that. Got my long train base for doing a custom uh, train carriage and lots of interesting stickered pieces and even a cool mini toy Darth Vader. Oh, and a great big pile of shrimp. Fantastic. <laughs> So as always, do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we were going to do the Castle Hill for the Castle Drawbridge to land on. But I'm kind of excited right now about this uh, tower block. So it might be that I do that first. We'll see. See you next time.